Hello everyone. Ah, yes, we are recording. Good. Well, this is her cucumber. Good day to you all. Small introduction. I will be playing Panzercore for you guys and girls. Uh, Panzercore is a bit of a modern version of the old Panzer General series. A hex-based war game that I enjoyed quite a lot in the late late 90s. Um, I was a big hex-based war game fan and I wasn't very good at it. Which you will undoubtedly see when I play this game. Alright, this game is immensely detailed. Um, for instance, there is a beautiful library here that has all the units with nice cutaway pictures. Look at that, it's beautiful. All of them. There we go. So that's awesome. So if you ever look for stuff, uh, it's in the library. It's also packed with information about what everything is and how movement works, for instance. You have movement points. Each unit has movement points. And they take um, different kind of movement points for different kind of vehicles. So got tanks, we've got half-track vehicles, we've got normal vehicles, we've got uh, units on foot, artillery, air units, etc. So that's the, the, the detail is immense. It's immensely good, it's immensely cool. Uh, and we also got air units here, we've got all kinds. There we go, some artillery. Beautiful. So we've got that. Uh, the game has multiplayer, I will not be showing that off. Um, two reasons really I don't know any good opponents that I can actually match up to <laughs> uh, that's how bad I am in this game and also I am going to make this a pretty long series anyway probably um, because what I'm intending to do is do the entire German campaign uh, that is uh, Fall Weiss all the way up to the end in 1945 so that's the German invasion in Poland all the way up to Berlin. Uh, I can show you some of that. Here we go. Uh, play. No, wait. I can just show you a scenario that might be better. All, all the scenarios. I've um, I've got a couple of expansions installed, including the expanded uh, scenario kit, uh, which is basically uh, the Grand Campaign Plus. Um, I'll put a link in. Um, and also the Africa Core expansion. I'll also put a link on, uh, in the description for you guys. I'll just just pick um, one of these. Hold on, Stalingrad. That's that's awesome. All right, there we go. Now here you got the difficulty settings. Uh, you've got basic difficulty where you can just go for um, yeah this, and the advanced difficulty. Uh, I'll try and explain this one as well a little bit. Uh, prestige. You get buy points during the game. I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, and if, if you want to give the AI a huge advantage, you can slide this uh, prestige thing to the right. I don't know if you can see my mouse pointer, probably not. That's one of the issues I'm experiencing, so don't comment on that. Uh, unless you really want to troll around, then feel free and watch me block every single account that you try to do that with. Anyway. <laughs> no, I won't. I'm a nice guy. I'll only mess with you once. Anyway, um, okay, so uh, the AI level here in the middle is set to 1. If I put it to 2, the AI will be so aggressive I have absolutely no chance of winning. So I'll put it on 1, and 0 is just too simple. I don't know about the game rules, I have no idea. Combat randomness, uh, we'll just go for normal combat randomness. I don't know what the differences between all of these are. And reform units are is going to be off. We're not going to mess with the strength or the experience no reason uh, I usually play on lieutenant level I'm not that good so I'll do that for this uh, particular uh, piece of kit there we go this is the, uh, the start of the turn screen uh, basically it's based on turns each side gets a turn to play and in a turn all kinds of things can happen <coughs> <coughs> okay so you have the victory conditions. Capture all objectives except Caucasus. My Cop, Grozny, and Baku. 
I have no idea why there are no extended conditions for this, but apparently there are. <laughs> okay. Alright, so this is the, uh, the campaign map. Um, as you can see, all units are represented graphically. Uh, for instance, you still can't see my mouse pointer, but I'm not gonna mess with that. I'm just gonna click on this Panzer 3L. There we go. And when we click on it, we can see how far it can drive. It's pretty pretty far. I could, for instance, drive up to this tank here. Uh, the um, I think it's a T34. Yeah, probably. And uh, yeah, I'll give you a short demonstration of that. There we go. So you now it's just see that and you can see the odds when you mouse over it uh, I would suffer two points and he would suffer four points of damage we're gonna make that a little worse there we go by flanking him there's another P34 there he's gonna play for a little bit so he, you have some idea <coughs> alright now I can move in some infantry as well there we go move in some infantry whoa okay those are nice odds I think these are Pioneer. Yes, they are. Okay. Pioneer are going to clear out these guys over here. As you can hear, the sounds are pretty loud. I don't know how to fix that just yet. Uh, I might want to tweak that later. Alright, let's fire at this guy. Oh, we get minus five. And it misses us completely. It falls back. And unfortunately, that means we have no more shot at it. I'm gonna fire at this one as well. And it misses us too. It stays in position. Oh boy, isn't that cool. Now this is a completely different unit. This is a Marder. And Marders, if I recall correctly, were traditionally uh, mobile artillery units also used against tanks. I'm gonna see if that's true. Eh, maybe. Suffer some damage. But we destroy it altogether. Look at that. And the units disappeared. So cool. Anyway, that's the basics. Uh, of course, you can use artillery. Uh, artillery. Each unit has range, a certain range. Um, let's see if we can, if I can show that off for you. I can show that off in the buy screen. There we go. Now this is the screen where you buy new units. New, when you buy new units, you basically get reinforcements based on a pool of prestige shown up here. Uh, in the left corner, up and left, and we get one extra core shot that a slot. That means we can get one unit that we can still place uh, at this time without overcrowding our army. For instance, these Kratschütze guys in, um, yeah, basically in in sidecar motors. Really nice scouting unit. As you can see, they all have um, their own statistics. Their cost in uh, in prestige. Uh, if I roll over another unit, you can see it's how it compares to that one. The comparison unit is to the right. Pioneer, the one I have now selected, and you can't see because my mouse pointer is in view, are way more expensive, but they don't cost any fuel. Um, Pioneer have better anti-tank capability, which you can see the little tank in the reticle there. Uh, on the left side of that uh, statistics uh, layer. Uh, and its anti-tank and anti-aircraft ability is also better than those in the case of the um, sidecar motor. However, uh, it also has... Um, let's see, what's this? Initiative, uh, which is worse. Kratschutzen have better initiative. That's the little two tank bits above the tank and the shield. And also, their um, their scouting ability is less than those of the Kratschutze, which it makes sense because the Kratschutze is basically, they have visibility three because they are a scouting unit. And they also have way more movement. So there, that's the idea. They're both soft targets. You can see the little target marker there on the right. And, um, Against uh, naval units, they have a force of one. It's amazing. <laughs> I wouldn't take these guys to see, though. Neither. Anyway, uh, let's have a look at that uh, artillery piece we were looking at. Nebelwerfer. Huh? I don't know if it's Nebelwerfer 41 or 42. These have range 2. These also have range 2. So I guess 
if I want to shoot with this thing in this particular situation, which I do, of course I do, I have to move it forward. And indeed, I now have a target and I don't have to be close by. Ah, well, nice going with the naval werfer. Let's see, this this thing, how much range does it have? Can we, can we see? Can we know? I don't know. I have no idea how to do this just yet. Um, there must be a hotkey for this. Ah, here we go. Uh, it has range. What kind of range does it? It doesn't have any range. Cool, you have to be right next to the unit to actually hit it. These are like, I don't know, 100 kilometer hexes, I guess. Holy shit, what a blow. And it falls back. I mean, who wouldn't? And the infantry finishes it off. And this is how you play the game. So, of course, these little areas need to be captured. Um, as you can see, there's flags there, the German uh, cross, and also the hammer and sickle representing uh, the Russians. Uh, in this particular scenario, at least. We also have air units. Air units have fuel. They have to land at some point. Uh, but for instance, if I were to go here, they're excellent scouting units. So if there's anything there, they are going to notice. See, there we go. They've just noticed something. And there's only artillery here. Oh, really? Spawn the shit out. And we killed it. We destroyed the Katyusha in one go. Nice. Very nice. I'm oh, just simply going on the offensive right here. Another Katyusha unit. This has been spotted. Uh, as you can see, when I click on this gun here, um, moving around doesn't always give you that uh, immediate move like you would here. If I move further than one square, I go into transport mode. Which is really nice, but it's also pretty dangerous. It's, it's pretty hairy, uh, if anything. Let's look at the info panel for this. What's their range? Their range is three, so if I want to be in, in safe position, I have to be three away from them, like this. And as you can see, it's now a truck. It's been loaded up, and it's moving forward. But it also means... Um, I'll just move this one in front of it. Okay. Now, if I fire at this tank, there's a, an artillery piece that will counter battery fire on me. Watch this. There we go. See? I clicked it, and now, now I get my chance to hit it. But they're both missing. They're not very good. So, that's my luck there. Uh, that thing will not, not cease counter firing until um, it's out of ammo for that round. Which, apparently, it is now. Okay. Alright, move my infantry to that flank. This is one thing I do want to capture as soon as possible. Um, I don't know. There's a Oh, there's a 15 strength unit there. That's a pretty huge unit up in the that little corner there. I'm going to move my guys up there. Um, yeah, you guys can just wait. I'm going to move my Pioneer up. There we go. And then you guys go up on the flank, and you move down there. You guys secure that area. And I'm just moving a bit of my units around to show you guys. Alright, so if I fire on this, you can see that the odds are way worse, because this is a pretty uh, large unit, and probably Katyusha's, I'm not sure. But they might be in range, and they might also fire. Oh, they don't. This is very efficient against tanks. Huge amounts of infantry, unfortunately for me. But I do actually f force them into almost non-existence. These are Romanians. They aren't the best troops that I've brought here. <laughs> unfortunately, uh, well, they are actually quite experienced. You can see in the description there that 20th Roma Romanian Mountain Mounted mountain units, I guess. Oh no, MT, M MNT. It's probably mountain units, mountaineers. Uh, they have th almost three stars. Uh, that's basically their experience bar. And the more experience they have, the better chance of their survival. Uh, units gain experience during the game. And you can upgrade them. <coughs> For instance, if I am. 
Let's see, where do we, where can I show you this? Well, I can show you that you can get re replacements here. Extra strength for less prestige. There we go, we can just up that and you, you can see it go to 11 instead of um, 10. So, but you can't move them after you do that, unfortunately. All right. Oh, this artillery piece can hit the tank. Do it. it doesn't actually do much, but you know. I'm gonna bomb it. Oh, the poor Russians. Now they're gonna meet my infantry. Yep, they retreated. I would have. And we're gonna do some more to them. There we go. Oh dear, there's a cannon there. That's not good. Okay, well, you get a general idea. Anyway, uh, once units gain experience, you, you this button here, upgrade units, become uh, becomes available. And for instance, you can use uh, the same crew from your old tank in a new tank. So that's pretty super. And uh, basically do whatever the heck you want. Um, for instance, tigers can be built from Panzer IV crews, I'm just saying. <coughs> That's one of the things you could do. Or you're, you could turn a regular infantry into grenadiers or elite infantry like paratroopers. So a lot of options there. And last but not least, when units survive in the campaign for long enough, they also gain heroes. Re heroes are basically special units that, uh, that work for you. Um, no, basically like a, um, yeah, how do I say this, like a plus unit, so a better unit. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the buy screen once more. Oh, I just put a unit to sleep, I didn't want to, but okay. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Gotta get rid of this pain here, there we go. Panel and put some anti-aircraft up. Flak feeling, very expensive. Uh, I'm going to show you something because in the bottom here, when I select this, you can see that there is a truck and a half track and another half track. There's a reason for that. And a uh, truck with a little red marker uh, drawn over it. Basically, when you buy a unit and it can be transported, it gives you the option of buying a transport. It's now 144 without a transport. If I add an Opel Blitz, it's 50 extra. So that's that. But that means that a unit that normally doesn't have that much mobility, like this one, will now have a lot of mobility. Without it, it has mobility 1. With it, it has mobility 8. Plus its foot range. So that makes 9 in total. That's pretty good. You can get half tracks uh, as well. They are slower, but they are better protected. And here's a scouting unit of the same half track, which is fucking expensive, but will protect them pretty well and also uh, drive pretty quickly, just like the Opel Blitz would. So there. All right. So um, I will be playing this well once or twice a week. Um, doing a campaign it can take quite a bit of time as you may understand and um, yeah I've seen scenarios that lasted well well over three hours the bigger ones and um, that depends if you want to rush things you can but rushing things excuse me generally doesn't work for me like my food <laughs> so uh, I will be taking my time on this one and uh, oh, there's something here as well. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. A 35th Gustav railgun. Urbigard. It's a railgun. That's lovely. Can you, um, can you even, um, can you fire on something or do you need to move before you can fire? I have no idea, but this thing looks awesome. Do I have an info panel on this? <laughs> What's its range? Six! Holy shit! It's got range six. Okay. Alright, so if I move these troops down here. Yeah, that's right. Let's leave let's see let's look at what the railgun can do here. 
Holy smokes. Okay, we'll just move it down a little bit. And we can start by taking down this piece of shit. There we go. It's a bunker buster, obviously. Okay, you guys are gonna remain there, that's fine. Okay, well this should be very interesting. At some point, when we continue this... Wow. As you can see, this uh, marker down here with the bunker... Just focus on the bunker. I know, I know you can see my mouse pointer, but focus on the bunker at the left bottom of the screen. Uh, has gone yellow. That means they are suppressed or affected by the fire at least. Um, and have limited... Uh, limited... Uh, functionality. If it's red, they can't even move. They're scared. Usually. So. Or they're about to retreat. We have a bomber here as well. We might as well use it. Fuck it. Well, that didn't do anything. Picked the wrong target, of course. Huh. Oh, there's a mobile artillery piece here. Uh, might want to use that. Nice! Excellent. Good shooting. Does anyone have any movement left? Of course not. <laughs> that would make things easier. Because then I could capture this town. Anyway. Okay. Well. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the uh, introductory uh, video. Uh, and I'll be seeing you when I really start playing. Thank you. Until later. Bye bye.